Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're asked to use the given graph of f of x is equal to x squared to find a number delta such that if x minus 1 is less than delta, then x squared minus 1 is less than 1 half. So let's first understand what these inequalities mean. So if we're saying that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta, that means that its magnitude is less than delta, which means that it's less than delta and greater than negative delta. Adding 1 here, we get that x is less than 1 plus delta and greater than 1 minus delta. This basically means that we're taking values of x that are no more than delta away from 1. Right? You can go all the way down to subtracting delta from 1, you can go all the way up to adding delta from 1, or you can add any number that's in between, but you can't go more than delta away from it. Similar thing here, we have the absolute value of x squared minus 1 is less than 1 half. Therefore, x squared minus 1 is less than 1 half and greater than negative 1 half. Adding 1, x squared is less than 3 over 2, and it's greater than 1 over 2. And therefore, we're saying that we are looking at values of x that output values of x squared that are between 1 half and 3 halves. And we need to find a delta for which, no matter how far you go to the left or right, as long as it's less than delta, you're going to be within this range. So if we look here, we have 1.5 and 0.5. And over this range, the function is within the um, values that we're looking for. That corresponds with being between these two um, x values. So what are these x values? Um, well, if this is x1 and this is x2, we know that x1 squared is equal to 1 half and x2 squared is equal to 3 halves. So what we can say is that if we take the square root of both sides, we get that x1 is equal to the square root of 1, which is just 1, over the square root of 2. And x2, taking the square root of both sides, is equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. And therefore, we're saying if we're between these two values, then you're going to be between these x squared values. So therefore, 1 minus delta equals 1 over root 2, and 1 plus delta equals um, root 3 over root 2. So solving for delta here, get negative delta equals negative, um, or we can just say 1 half, or 1 over root 2 minus 1. Therefore, delta equals 1 minus 1 over root 2. And subtracting 1 from this side, we get delta equals root 3 over root 2 minus 1. And so we have to say which of these is the actual value of delta, because they're not the same. And the answer is that we have to pick the more restrictive delta. We have to pick the one such that if we go, let's say this smaller value is further away from one, because just graphically it looks like that. Um, that's not how you would actually go about solving it, but just for the sake of doing this, we look at which one looks like it's further away. And we say, okay, we go this far in this direction, and we're still within this range on the y-axis. However, if we go this far in the other direction, because this line is closer, we're going to cross over it, and we're going to be at, let's say, this point up here, and therefore we're going to be at values of the function that are outside of the range that we're looking at. Therefore, we have to go with the smaller of these two values, because that is going to put the greater restriction on the function and keep you within these bounds. Because look, let's say this is the shorter distance. If we go this um, much, we're going to stay in range. But also, if we only go this much, the same distance in the other direction, we have to um, go to this point, which corresponds here. And all of these points here are also within the range. So the smaller of these two 
which we can just assume from graphically because I don't have a calculator in front of me, is the lower value. You know, plug it into your calculator to be sure, but we can assume that this is the more restrictive and therefore the actual value of delta that we can choose.